English now? Yeah, English. Because in this episode, uh, we're not going to be in Sweden. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take you all down to Australia to go visit my good friend Luke Laffin. I did mention him in episode 12 of Skook's Custom because, well, the story is him and I met back in 1996 in Canada. I mean, that's, uh, well, 25 something years ago. We were shooting pool, drinking beer, just talking. And we soon came to realize that both of us were into Volvos in a way which is probably not entirely healthy. But, well, that's just the way things are. Anyway, um, some years ago, when I started building this rally Volvo of my own, my 1973, it turned out that Luke was also building a rally Volvo 140 series in Australia. I mean, the odds are just crazy. So, uh, we've been kind of keeping in touch a bit more since then. I've been sending him a few parts, a uh, gearbox, among a few other things. And since his build is something which, to my mind, is just completely uh, outrageous in a good way, I decided to let you all have a little tour of his shop and you're also going to get to see his collection of Volvo cars. So please enjoy. So I've been a bit of a Volvo fan, I suppose, since I was young. My dad had a few of them. He had a... Uh, 61 122s four door uh, 164e from 74 and a um, 145 wagon 72 model anyway and then i've from there progressed on to a 142s i've had three of those three 144s two 145s a 242dl a 242gt uh 122s four door a 122s two door a 121 wagon now the 123 GT and 70, what have got, a 740 GL wagon and a 740 turbo wagon and a Saab. And, and, and then I'll miss a new, it's the work you, amongst other things. Anyway, it's all good fun. Which brings us to the main attraction, this 1970 Volvo nicknamed The Egg because of the yellow color. It has been sitting for many, many years until Luke pulled it out and started to build a very, very interesting rally car. 1970 142S that I picked up in the late 90s, 400 bucks. Anyway, turning it into my rally car. So, start at the front. But, uh, B234 with uh, six, obviously the 16 valve that'll run on 50 mil Webers uh, and I put the extractors out that side so you can see that I've made it left hand drive uh, dry sumps so the pumps there um, what is it 13 and a half to 1 it's been ported bigger valves probably 250 280 horsepower hopefully should be fun should be fun? Well, that's putting it mildly. It's going to be a blast. Oh, and I forgot to mention, Luke is going to be using this Australian-made setup, which is a dry sump, and a set of Weber 50s that I have been using on my Volvo Amazon for many, many years. <laughs> Yeah, so those carbs are going to be sucking Australian air from, from now on. Oh, and another interesting feature is the fact that Luke actually made his own flywheel from scratch. <laughs> on top of this, he also constructed his very own front suspension system. Uh, here we have my suspension that I've dreamed up. It's a double bell crank push rods, uh, all rose jointed so you can adjust every aspect of your handling uh, using uh, 240 struts the upright, uh, 300mm S60 discs a um, bit of custom making steering arms back to the original and that sort of thing uh, just got to deal with the clearance, slight clearance issue there with a the dry sump anyway it moves, custom shocks, uh, and canisters. Yeah. For my part, I am extremely impressed with Luke's abilities here, and I'm fully confident this is going to work like a charm. Uh, okay, so all this, uh, built the engine myself. Um, 
as you saw with the flywheel, made that, and all this front end I've designed and built myself, a tube bender and the like. Uh, so we've got the uh, yeah, Quay four speed in it. So uh, that and the diff has a 488 to one with a chromoly spool. Um, so I'm hoping at about I don't know, 8,000 RPM, I'm doing about 180 kilometres an hour. Anyway, it's been a fun project so far. If I get to drive one day. At the front here, we have uh, a mount this yet. So pedal box, uh, electric steering out of an Opel, and a two to one quickener. So that'll be two turns lock to lock. Uh, got the close ratio gearbox and fancy shifter from Billy. And still mount, still to yet to mount the seats. Um, these are Nissan Sumitomo, uh, four spots alloy, so they'll go on the front. Period. Steering wheel? I suppose that was a Volvo option. There was a few around when I was younger, those things. Anyway, needs a bit of a recover. Uh, all, uh, steel roll cage to Motorsport Australia specs. Bars everywhere, anyway. Um, it was good fun putting that in. And down over to rear uh, shock towers, so for the coilovers. Uh, when I got the car, it was actually that blue colour, and then I painted it yellow and white, obviously, hence the name The Egg. And pretty much the only rust in it was um, that corner there. So it was pretty good. I think it was probably just facing the ocean. So it's how it any rust was all just on this side. Uh, a little bit knocking around, as you do in Australia. Um, installed the jack stand points. Uh, yeah. uh, fuel cell, FIA approved fuel cell, that'll sit there. I think it has to be 50 millimetres back from the roll cage hoop. Uh, and then cut all that out. And then the spare wheel will sit on top of that from inside the boot. Um, and that means that they use a dry brake system for filling the fuel, which are uh, horrendously expensive. Anyway, and just in this position here on this side or the other side, I'll put the uh, oil tank for the uh, dry sump system. Yeah, good. Uh, a friend of mine's... Uh, a friend of mine, Ben's an aeronautical engineer, and he's used to make skis, actually, snow skis. So he's doing the fiberglass guards. So we have just the skin at the moment for the boot. Weighs about three kilos or something. Um, yeah, like I said, the spare wheel will go in there. That's actually the fuel tank in a bladder thing. And then I'll just put a plate over that on there, uh, the old fuel tank. Uh, and then in here I'll have to have the amount for the dry brake system um, so we can run fiberglass guards uh, acrylic windows on the back and the sides and in the front just has to be a normal uh, windscreen glass um, I did put the later tunnel you know for the gearbox in um, so I could fit that gearbox in or any other one that I wanted to use um, yeah should be all right. Yeah, did these flares. Still got to sort of sand it all back then. It's got a bit of a thin layer of filler in there. Um, put 40 mil spaces on it to get the track out. And I also did the front 40 mil wider as well to match it. Uh, it's all rose jointed um, with uh, yeah, the yoke at the front there to give it a bit of toe in and then be able to adjust the top arms up and down just to uh, change the, uh, what do you call it, not the anti-dive, but anyway, you know, change it squat, anti-squat. Yeah, should be right. Other than that, just sort of seam welded underneath um, pretty badly with a MIG because it's never fun. Yeah, and took all the body deadener off. Happy days.
So that's it for now regarding this awesome project, but rest assured we will return to the egg in a future episode. And also, I would like to let you know that we have made plans, uh, which include me going to Australia to race with Luke in this Volvo, and him coming to Sweden to race with me in one of my cars. But now, we're going to take a look at the rest of his collection and a few other very interesting Volvos belonging to his friends. This is my 1971 Volvo 144S. It's now an S, was an auto, and it was used for variety bash to go from the east to the west coast of Australia in 2004. Adorned with a Swedish flag and the model number. It's got uh, the GT dash, which is rare here in Australia. Terra trip, Matt Laplite, overdrive, which is that switch there and some vintage Strathoff seats which are actually quite comfortable. Bit of dirt from the Carnacross across on the weekend. It's got the mini lights, otherwise standard brakes. Um, suspension is pretty good for dirt. Same so again, engine's a bit grotty from the weekend. Anyway, D-spec cam, four under one extractors. Uh, it's pretty lumpy actually. Um, and uh, Electronic distributor, 321. Uh, steel timing gear. Oh, I think we're well at the moment. And a nice noise exhaust. You must leave home, do it in a Volvo, apparently. This is my recent acquisition, which is the 1968 123 GT. Uh, it's been Kept in a garage, not driven since 1983. Uh, guy bought it in 1977, but I think it was used as a bit of a rally car for a while. Um, hasn't got too much rust in it. Just a little bit down there, and a little bit inside the boot. And I think just a couple of spots down there in the floors. So it's been repainted. Um, I think it was used as a rally car, I think, so, because it's had, uh, it's had the sills replaced until a bit dark here, but there's the seam there, and then, uh, you know, in the gas brazing in there, um, and probably a bit of bog, you yeah, body filling in the back there, and the bad paint. Um, interior is not too bad. The spare tube shows you how old it is. Um, for Australian conditions, it's not too bad. Uh, I'll have to get a new dash pad. Uh, it's got the overdrive, the GT wheel, all that fun stuff. I did another weird thing where he was wanted to put the gearbox extension port in it. So, well, you know, the later model with the short gear stick. So he cut that out and didn't weld it in. So I have to weld that back in. Could be fun. Wish you got the overdrive. Oh yeah, here we are on the sunny side, so you can see better the, they had the sills put back in, new sills, so they've done quite a nice job. When I um, get it sandblasted, we'll find out, and he's obviously run over some stuff because the floor's a bit knocked up and that's where the holes are. The rubber mats are gone. So Australia's really hard on rubber and dashboards and stuff because of the really high UV. If anyone's been here in the summer, you know how badly sunburned you get. Anyway, good fun project. Yeah, roof lining's really good, which is great. Um, other thing he did was put a 140 diff in it, so it's got the discs on the back, and he's put the 140 um, calipers on the front, and, and uh, P1800 brake booster, and he's jimmied up this bar and you know had to space out the clutch master these washers and the like anyway not too bad a job but um it's got a two liter in it instead of the 1800 he didn't remember why he just wanted to get more power out of it i think but it's got the one got the original head on it so it's 1.8 liter head on a two liter uh bottom end um bit of air horn ridge bit of fun um, it's had a bit of a knock around, so 
And the re- other thing I was thinking, because it's a, probably a rally car, you know, they, they crack down in the corners there, so that's already been plated and and uh, brazed back up. So a uh, bit of work to do to clean it up. Not too bad, really. And there's only 34 of these, I think, in Australia. Last registered in 19... July 1983 in South Australia. Anyway, so I'm very chuffed to get this car. It's not my childhood dream car, weirdly. But anyway, Volvo nerd. This is on the TT. Check out these suckers. Here is a 63 122S four-door. It's actually one of my friends, so um, it's uh, he's had that for a while, but it's got a bit of rust. So he's really just started to redo things like the sills, uh, rear wheel arches on both sides, and he had an accident a few years ago where he got run up the back and in the front, so he got hit the back and then he ran out the back of somebody else, so um, the boot needs fixing plus all this sort of all this stuff along here needs to be cleaned up, so I'm helping him with that um, oh yeah, so this one original diff out of the this GT had 4.56 ratio with a limited slip diff which is pretty rare in this part of the world. So a bit beyond me why he pulled it out. I think he just liked the idea of disc brakes. Uh, so lastly for what I've got here anyway, it's a 1979 GT, just sort of sitting out in the weather. Um, got it pretty cheap from Melbourne because it had been sitting under a tree and got a bit rusty. Um, Cut out bits of sill. Uh, I've got replacement doors. Um, other side. It's got my faux spoiler. Oh, the whole back was rusted out, so I've just got a later model and uh, cut the arse out of it so I can put the rubber, you know, the later model bumpers and stuff because I like the idea of that. And then weld it on down there. That all came out pretty well. There is that is. Uh, a bit more rust on this side, but not too bad really. Nothing in the floors, which is quite amazing. So I've got a few spare interior bits and stuff. Looks like rubbish, but anyway. Uh, in 1979, Australia brought in GTs and a bunch of them with factory autos. So sort of unfortunately, this is one of them. But I'll pull that out and I've got a uh, Tremec. T5, I think, and the you know adapter plates and stuff. So I'll put that in there. And oof, under the bonnet. Currently just standard. It actually runs and goes all right, um, which is pretty cool. But I'm going to whip that out and put another uh, 16 valve in it with the manual five-speed manual. Um, yeah, so you can see where I've welded the new one in. Better finish it off before it rusts away again. Anyway, and then I've got this uh, another B234. Quite like these engines when you get rid of all the balance shafts and stuff. And um, I'll, I've got another 16 valve head, so I'll stick that on and um, get it to go all right. Maybe put a turbo on it later. Anyway. It don't really like silver, so it won't be silver. It might also be green. Um, so this is what I have. I also have a uh, 
about a 1967 122S two door out at a friend's farm, but it's uh, very rusty. Anyway, look at that one later. Here we are in George Manasson's workshop. Got his old 123 GT, his current 123 GT in original condition. It's very nice. Here we have a factory 142 rally car from 1970. It's done 37,000 miles. Anyway, it's pretty cool. It's changed it around a bit. Came with a 488 to 1 uh, diff in it and a close ratio 4 speed only. Anyway, and you'll, you'll see the um, liquid clutch instead of the cable. We took the Solexes off it for some reason and yeah, anyway, other than that, quite original. And then lastly here at the moment, because he's got a 242 GT as well, is his P1800 which he's restored. I think he said that's a 68. Yeah, yeah. pretty nice. So I'm just up here getting some parts for my GT, 123GT, factory aerial. Pretty cool. Yeah, so how about that, huh? Uh, me personally, I really had no idea Volvos are that popular in Australia until I found out what, what Luke is doing. Uh, or maybe it's just him and his friends. I really don't know. But yeah, you know. Um, anyhow, that's it for now. I hope you like that. If you want to see more about his rally build, just let me know and, and please comment below and I'll, I'll see what we can do. Um, until next time, please like and subscribe. And as you know, I will always answer all comments you guys have. Um, and I'm going to keep welding on this, which is the upcoming project. And I'm pretty sure you're going to like it. So take care and I'll see you in a couple of weeks.